In this video, we want to look at modeling and optimization um, using our derivatives and finding max and mins. Now, before I get started, let me back up a little bit and look at a few things. First off, this is a problem we looked at earlier this year of just doing some algebra um, to simplify. And I just want to um, refresh your memory when you have something like this where you have a square root or a radical on the bottom and a radical on the top that we can simplify this by multiplying by the radical on the top and the bottom over here to get common denominators. And then what that will do is we will have 2x plus 1 plus 3x, and then the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x minus 2 is just x minus 2. And then our denominator is just the square root of x minus 2. So we get this when we end up doing a product rule or quotient rule or something for a, um, for a function. And then we could multiply the top out. We could simplify it. And in this case, you would then get 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 all over square root of x minus 2. And then you could find your critical points and so forth in your problem. So first, I want to mention that. We had looked at that earlier this year in simplifying, but just to kind of bring that up again. Second thing I want to mention is when we looked at a problem like this previously and said, OK, this function gives us the height of the rocket. What is the highest point? or prove this is a maximum. This is kind of what we're doing with our optimization. Um, and so we would find our derivative, which would be 2AT plus B. So if we found the critical point and I solve for T, that would give me B over 2A. And then we wanted to determine you know, is this a max or a min, or in this case, prove it's a maximum height. And we have two ways to do that. Our two ways to do that are the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Remember, both of these ways work to give us our max or mins. So we could think our first derivative test, just to refresh your memory, is if we have some point A and we go minus plus, which tells us, okay, this is decreasing, this is increasing, that would tell us we have a minimum at x equals A. The second derivative test is you would find the second derivative, you would plug A in to the second derivative, and if your second derivative was positive at that value, that would also tell you you have a minimum at A, because if the second derivative is positive, then you know it would be concave up, and you would have a minimum. So back here, we were able to determine that. I would do this one with the second derivative test, just because I think this is easier. We would find the second derivative, which was minus 2a, because a is a positive constant. This is less than 0, which tells me, if it's less than 0, that this value is a maximum. All right, all the stuff we need to remember to recall to get started with our optimization problems. Um, what we're going to look at is something we looked at similar when we were in pre-calc, and there we just used our calculator. Now we're going to use calculus. So if you remember, if we have something like this, and we say, well, the perimeter of this rectangle is 50, and this side is x, if you remember, we would then know that these two sides of this rectangle would have to add up to 25. So we would know that this side would be 25 minus x. And then we could say, let's look at the area and then find the maximum area. We could find our function. We could find our derivative, our critical points, and go from there. Remember, if we had a house on one side and we said this side is x and this side is x, then this side would be 50 minus 2x, and then we could do the same kind of thing, finding our area. This is a different problem, but it would work out the same way. So we've looked at this previously in pre-calc. Now we want to kind of look at similar problems and beyond by using our calculus. So let's say we have this example. A man has 40 feet of fence to enclose a rectangular garden. The dimensions, find the dimensions of the largest garden he can have using all of the fence. So first, if we draw our picture, rectangular garden, if I say this side is x, 
then it tells me that the length and width have to be 20 since we have 40. So I know these two sides have to add up to 20. So this side is 20 minus x. So we know our area is x 20 minus x. Now I do want to mention we know here our domain because we're dealing with a real world problem has to be from 0 to 20. And we could say it can't be 0 if we want to use parentheses. It can't be 0, it can't be 20 because then one side of the rectangle would be 0. So if I distribute this I get to there. Now, if I take my derivative, I get minus 2x plus 20. And that tells me that my critical point is 10. Now, I next, I need to show that 10 is a maximum. So I could do this with first derivative test, or I could do this with second derivative test. You are not going to do both. You're going to pick one and use that. In my case here, I think this is easier to do second derivative test because the second derivative is negative 2, which tells me this is less than 0. So that shows that that is a max. So what are the dimensions? If x is 10, then this is 10, so my maximum dimensions are a 10 by 10. Which, once again, you probably could have got there. You understand a square is going to give you the maximum area, but this is more about us going through the process as these problems get harder than anything else. So let's look at a harder one. What is the largest possible area for a right triangle whose hypotenuse is five centimeters long. So if we draw a picture hypotenuse is five, this side is x, this side here is in by Pythagorean theorem. We'll say this is y for now. This is x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. So if I subtract the x squared and take the square root, my y is 25 minus x squared. So now if we want to find the area of this, it is 1 half base times the height. So there is our formula for the area. Next, we need to find the derivative. So as we find the derivative, we got to use product rule, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second, and if we think of this as to the one-half power, we would bring down the one-half, subtract one times the derivative of the inside. If we simplify this, we get square root of 25 minus x squared over 2 minus if we get over here this 2 is going to cancel with one of these so we end up getting um, x squared on the top and on the bottom we're going to get 2 square root of 25 minus x squared So, you can see this problem is very similar to what we looked at at the beginning today. So, to get our common denominator, I'm going to multiply by 25 minus x squared over here. And that will give me my denominator of 2 square root of 25 minus x squared. 
all over. On the top, this square root of 25 minus x squared is going to give me 25 minus x squared over here, minus x squared. So I end up with 25 minus 2x squared. So there is my derivative. So my critical points, I have a couple. What makes the bottom zero or undefined is 5. And once again, it would be plus or minus 5. And then what makes the top undefined is plus or minus square root of 12.5. Now, in this situation, because we are looking at the sides and lengths of a triangle, I do not need to worry about the negative case. Everything's got to be positive. And secondly, I don't really have to worry about 5. If I put 5 in to here... If this side was 5, that side is 0, which is not really a triangle. So really, I only have one critical point. Square root of 12.5. Now, at this point, I need to determine, is that a max or a min? So I could do this with sign analysis or first derivative test, or I could do it with second derivative test. In this case, I am going to do it with sign analysis because I do not want to find the second derivative of this. So we have square root of 12.5 is our um, critical point, and realistically everything has to be zero or positive here, so it has to be greater than zero. Now, as I look at this, if I think of the numerator of this fraction, that's what I'm really looking at. The bottom's always positive. So if I put a number in bigger than the square root of 12.5, this is going to be negative, so that would be negative. If I put a number in less than 1, let's say, this is going to be positive, so this is going up, down, so this is a maximum. Now, if we actually want to find what is, as the question says, what is the largest possible area, I now need to find the area and put my critical point back in to my original function, which is up here. And if I do that, work this out ahead of time, I get 6.25. So that is my maximum area. Now, we have done problems like this, like I said, in pre-calc, where we would do this and we would graph it on the calculator. So if I take that function and I graphed it on the calculator, this is the graph that I would get. So you can see here is our maximum area 6.25 and here is where that occurs which is the square root of 12.5 so for the problems we're kind of looking at here yes we could do these once we get to this formula we could graph that on our calculator and find that that's not going to be true for all of the functions that we are going to look at okay So that is the end of this part one of optimization 4.7. If you are following along with your homework, that should be able to get you through the problems on the front of the homework. Tomorrow we will continue with the rest of the notes and then get to the problems on the back of the homework.